of the Board of Commissioners. I'm going to call this meeting of the Board of Commissioners together at 7.09 on Tuesday, October 22nd. Um, Aiden, would you do a roll call for us? Yes, yeah, sorry, just give me one moment, just getting the slides started. All right, Commissioner Brooks? Commissioner Colbert? He's not here. Here. Commissioner Franklin? Here. Commissioner Lott? Here. Commissioner Pravat? She's also not here. Public we'll Works Director? their entry time. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, Public Works Director Donnell Bond? Here. Town Administrator Clayton Anderson? Present. Police Chief David Burse. I'm not sure he was going to be late, so. Okay. Um, and Attorney, uh, sorry, Town Attorney Ken Roth. Here. Thank you. Um, I have a message from Commissioner Brooks that he's trying to log on. Um, so I don't know if you're able to email him the, um, link if you, if you're able to, while we go through the rest of the early pieces. Okay. Um, we'll do. Uh, and the rest of us can rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And we'll move on to a review of the agenda. Um, and we only have two items on the agenda, introduction of property standards ordinance and uh, public comment on charter review. Are there any changes to the agenda? Hearing none, um, it, can I hear by voice approval to the agenda? If in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. We'll move forward on the agenda. Um, let me just tell the other commissioners that the link is coming to them. Um, all right. We have a consent agenda. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Is there a second? Prior to approving, I have a correction and a request. Do you want to second it first and sure. then we'll make it? Yeah, but the motion would be with the correction. Oh, you're right. Okay. You're right. Are you willing yeah. to remove your motion? To your motion. I was doing my okay. Um, the one correction is on page three, the minutes from the September 22nd. Meeting uh, item 6B, uh, I responded no on that action. Okay. Uh, and then the one request would be uh, for Director Bond to expand on uh, where we are with the splash pad updates when in the meeting. We can do that now since we're in that section. I mean, it, we talked about this. On, it's really I've got to get more involved with the higher level if you want to. Yeah. We'll do that now. Okay. Yeah. So uh, basically with uh, phase one, we were given certain exemptions that uh, if we were to move forward with phase two, there would be things we would have to implement if we went above a certain square footage uh, uh, area of disturbance. Um, the way it's designed currently, we're over that threshold, so there is quite a bit of stormwater management that DPI is asking us to implement. Um, we got an exemption for the bio retention pond. However, there's another piece um, that goes along with that that we're not getting an exemption for. Uh, the changes that DPI wants us to incorporate are to the tune of 200,000, um, which is roughly around the, the main number of 
we have to meet with DPI, see if there's any way we can get some sort of waiver or some sort of exemption. Uh, that's one option. The other option is to see where we could scale this down. Take 12 feet off of it, 12 square feet off. <laughs> and option three would be to eliminate one of the phases, which if we did do that, um, they already had a tractor trailer load of equipment that we would have to pay for and find some more store. Yeah, it's it's a really small square footage that is causing the problem, um, and all our surfaces are impervious. So we're hoping that by meeting with um, a director level person, we can get some more reasonable. Um, so, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda with? The change made to page three, six B, showing Commissioner Colbert to vote as nay. Is there a second? Okay. Um, Mr. Thomas, would you call the roll? And I'm not sure mm -hmm. if Commissioner Brooks has joined us or not. Um, if you can see if he's here um, and make sure he's able to speak. At this time, he still has not joined, but um, okay. I'll look to the roll. Um, Commissioner Colbert? Aye. Commissioner Franklin? Aye. Commissioner Lott? Aye. Motion carries. Um, with that, um, we're going to get ready to move on to business. Um, you guys mind if we take a brief two minute or one minute recess for me to just check in because I hate for commissioners to not be able to access the meeting if they're okay. I'm here, Sarah. Okay. okay. All right. So we'll move on then to business. I'm glad you're with us. Um, and we're going to move on to ordinance 2024 04 property standards. Um, this is being reintroduced tonight. This is, isn't a vote this evening, um, just an introduction. And um, Special Assistant Thomas, if you could read it into the record for the introduction. Certainly. Ordinance 2024-04, being read in session, regular town meeting. Sorry. Introduced Tuesday, October 22nd, 2024, an ordinance of the Board of Commissioners for the Town of Upper Marlboro to amend all ordinances previously enacted related to property maintenance standards in the Town of Upper Marlboro to enact this ordinance 2024-04, adopting property maintenance standards for the Town of Upper Marlboro and repealing all pre provisions of previous town ordinances that are inconsistent with the prov provisions of this ordinance. Um, is there any discussion on the board about this item, which we'll discuss again at our work session in November? I have a question. Mm -hmm. My question is, well, not really a question first. So <clears throat> the other morning I was driving past the farm mm -hmm. area and I see all the, the um, fencing they have up and they're doing some work, but on mm -hmm. the side where the house was taken down and the building was removed, mm -hmm. it's a, the grass is really, really tall mm -hmm. over there. So my question would be um, the same as I had before. What, how are we going to hold the um, the county accountable for their not they're not fulfilling their obligations within the town if we pass the ordinance? So these are kind of two different topics. This is what our ordinance is going to be, right? And that's what we're looking at adopting. Um, I know that. With regard to the tall grass, the contractor had to come out and remove the silt fence. It is they do maintain that and mow the grass regularly. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that Director Bond can reach out and ask when they're mowing it next or get them to mow it sooner. Um, as far as keeping the property boarded and locked up, that's happening. Um, so I think if we want to have a bigger discussion and add 
a discussion about the school to our agenda when we do our approval of the agenda for the next meeting we can do that but i think we should try and stay focused on the ordinance we're adopting and if there's any edits or changes that anyone wants to make so i guess what i'm saying is well i said what i said and i and i feel like it's it's, it's all the same I feel like we we're not if we adopt this ordinance, how do we make them responsible? And I know I know that you can call them to cut the glass or whatever, but I, I mean like future things that happen. What what do we do if we have an issue with them as far as not maintaining certain things? I'm not just talking about the grass, but that's one thing that I've actually saw recently. I'm so, just talking about in general. Okay, so I don't want to get too off topic, but I will. To describe kind of what happened with the house that used to be there that was kind of falling down. Mm -hmm. So we reached out to the county. We told them that it was hazardous, it was dangerous. People were, you saw people go into it. I saw people go into it. Um, so we worked with them to get it on their schedule for demolition, take it down. It was a process. I had to send a request letter, um, and then it turned out that they had to put machinery close to the grave site of Dr. William Beans, which is a historic site. So they just they yeah, had to jump through a lot of hoops of time. Okay. But they did work with us okay. throughout that process to get that building down so the site is safe again. Okay. So if you know something happens with the boarded up windows or whatnot, we can just contact them and they can, you know, make sure everything's tight there. Right. So I get it. So I got a notice or one of those citation notices mm -hmm. for my grad. How do we make them responsible for things that they're not doing how do we hold them accountable that's all I'm asking I mean I'm not saying that the that this is a bad idea I just want to know how what are, what do we have to stand on if we say we want you guys to 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 you know to basically um, do a better job of, of keeping the, the town the parts that they are responsible for so I think we're getting back into a separate discussion, um, which is just the communication that we have with the county. We've had really good communication with the county. It's resulted in positive things with regard to maintenance. Um, and so I think if the building, if there's issues, you know, where the building is unsafe and there's some kind of access to it, they will come out and deal with that if we ask them to. Um, Attorney Ruff shared with us last time that the process, you know, citing the county is, is not something that really resolves your issues. You just put in a 311 ticket. Okay. Um, so the reason we're adopting, trying to adopt this ordinance is because our current property standards are held in multiple ordinances. And it can be a lot and we're codifying and we want to make it, kind of make it make sense, right? right? So this is pulling everything together into one clear ordinance adopting the county's regulations, which is what we have said we wanted to do since we started discussing this um, over probably 18 months ago. So that's all this is doing. It's not. Well, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it. That's not what okay. I said. I just want to know how do we, it's checks and balances. How do we make them responsible? Just by putting in a 311 ticket? Do you have a? Yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say that uh, I've already reached out to the contractor about the So let me ask you this. Can the residents also enter 311 ticket? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. That's something I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. You can also call 311. And if you're, while we're on this, I'd like to reiterate this. If you're a resident and you call 311 and the county tells you that they can't help you because you're in a municipality, you have to tell them, no, you're calling about a county road or county property. Um, and you have to be sure you're calling about a county road or county property. And we're happy to answer those questions. If you call town hall to check with us first. Yeah, a lot of times that operator, when you pick up, will tell you they can't take your report, but they can and they have to. Um, so just know that, you know, if you get that pushback and you're not sure, call town hall and we'll clarify for you. Okay, you answered my question. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion before we take public comment? Oh, Attorney Ross. 
So the watermark on this graph oh, should, should have, have been removed. Been. Okay. Uh, we'll remove it for the meeting when we're voting on it. Or, or we can remove it for the work session as well. All right. Um, we are going to take public comment. If you are online, please raise your hand. If you are in here, please come up to the podium. Please state your name and the street you live on. You do not have to tell us your address on that street. Is there any online comment, Mr. Thomas? Not at this time. Okay. We have one comment in the room. Uh, Joe, we're playing a little more bike. Um, I am not sure what the effect of the title of the, you know, this, this block at the top, but if that has any legal standing, because it says it is repealing all provisions of prior cop ordinances that are inconsistent with provisions of this ordinance. I can't actually find where it does that within the ordinance. Um, and by not clearly listing which ordinance you intend to repeal, you basically put into question of whether of which ones actually apply, such as, um, you know, is the rule about the size of your trash can considered a property standard? Um, if someone is to found out of compliance and told that they had to repair a structure, would they then be required to get a permit to repair the structure, as in uh, was that Article 1, Section 3, the town requires a building permit at all times, and Prince George's County requires a county building permit. A person may not erect, reconstruct, repair, or remove any building or structure from the town except in compliance with the building code of Prince George's County. So, I got a not a citation to repair my garage. Do I then have to file the $50 fee to get a building permit to be allowed to repair the garage? Um, I've also been trying to parse section. It's on page 20, the E, the transfer of ownership, is a giant one-arm sentence. And somehow it seems that it is possible to transfer a building, even though it's shall be unlawful for, and I'm still just actual to the thing to read, and I'm just not getting what exactly that says. Um, so, um, that's all I had to say. So. Are there any other public comments? Um, I am just going to briefly answer a few of those questions. Um, attorney Russ, E is legalese that has to be in there because you can't sell a house when there's something on it. Am I correct? Yes, I just you can't sell your house when there's a site patient right. cost that's, on it. That's, that's what E basically says. Yeah. If you have a compliance order, you can serve with that. You can't sell or transfer it without clearing up right. that order. Yeah. Um, and just with regard to whether a permit would be required to repair the building, you would have to refer to if a, a county building permit is required Correct. for the repair, then a town building permit is required for the repair. All right. Um, so with that, we'll move on to charter review. Um, this is still mostly public comment at this point because we are in a town meeting. So um, actually going to ask um, our town administrator to kind of explain what the charter does so that people know what kind of questions it's asking. Like when you go online and you look at our charter, it's overwhelming and you're not sure really what you're being asked. Right. Um, so, like, what is the charter? Or, attorney, one of you guys can go with kind of like what the charter does and what's covered under it. You want yeah. To, yeah. Sorry. 
charter is like the overarching document that, that talks about how a municipal corporation is organized, the form of government, um, and things of that nature. So generally it begins with an article that talks about how it is an incorporated entity. Um, it will then go on to say what powers and duties the, um, the legislative body has, as well as the town itself. It will then go in and tell you about um, what your form of government is. So if you have a commission or form of government, as you do, it'll, it'll go into what that means. Or if you had a different form of government, it would tell you what the different um, roles of the mayor and council were. And then it generally addresses things such as finance. Generally, um, it will talk about having different uh, department heads. So it kind of gives you the, the corporate structure outline for the municipal corporation. Then you also have your, your town code, which would then take your charter and expand upon it. Um, so is that? Yeah, I was kind of looking for that. This is like, it talks about like elections. It talks about how the yeah. town spends money. It talks about how we as a board are are organized. It talks about how the town's organized. So like, just so people know what, when they think about charter review, they're like, I don't know what that is. But to, to say what that is, is do you have an opinion on any of these things and share it with us? So, yeah. So, okay. So if anyone has comments, um, Mr. Thomas, if you see an online comment, let us know. We do have one comment in the room. Uh, Joe, we're playing with longer bike. Um, this question is, you know, are you intending to replace the charter symbols? I know that it was based on some sort of a template from, I think, the Maryland Municipal League at some point. But uh, you know, unless you have a specific flaw in the charter that you are trying to fix, you know, in general experience, if you were to just replace it with something else, you're almost always guaranteed to introduce other problems that you weren't expecting. So I would recommend doing, you know, the minimum possible to fix any problems rather than some of these wholesale ordinances that we've had that have, you know, end up changing the definition of vegetation to where my garden no longer considered vegetation, but that I keep getting excited for. So, thank you. Are there any other comments online? Not at this time. Um, Attorney Brown. If you don't mind, um, sure. the speaker brought up a great point uh, mm -hmm. that often over time you change bits and pieces of your charter without really taking into consideration how that one change might affect other sections of your charter, which is why you do a wholesale review of the charter every so often. The you know, county does it, I think, every 10 years. Um, you know, municipal corporations, I don't, some do it regularly, some don't. Okay? Um, but it's a very good point that what you're trying to do when you review it to make sure that the charter as drafted currently represents how you operate, right? Because you want to make sure that you're still conforming to the parameters of your charter. Or if things have changed, you want to talk about whether the charter should change or the practice should change. And then as you go through your changes, you do want to make sure they all come together. You don't want to, so if you, um, you change the name, that's a simple change, right? Change the name of one of your um, employees from a department head. So maybe you have a um, treasurer versus a finance director, right? You would want to make sure that that change was throughout the document. So I think what we'll do kind of moving forward, um, since we've been taking public comment on this for many months now, um, 
is to start to take the charter one piece at a time at each meeting and go through it so we can get through comprehensive review and make sure that we've done all of that. So if you have opinions or you're just kind of curious about what each part does, come to the meetings and we'll be reviewing it or listen online. When will we start doing that? We can start doing that at the work session. Um, Seeing no other comment, um, we'll move on to administrative updates. Um, before I ask staff if they have any administrative updates, I just want to take a minute. Um, we, we didn't have our kind of commissioner reports at the beginning. I want to take a minute to thank um, Commissioner Colbert and Commissioner Pravat for attending um, a event on my behalf and presenting an award, Commissioner Colbert presenting an award on behalf of the town. Um, while I was in the hospital, and Commissioner Pravat for, even though she was already carrying the church role <laughs> for the Trinity um, yard sale, also taking on the town role. And I really appreciate uh, the help that both of them. I just wanted to say that. Um, Administrator Anderson, do you have any administrative updates? <laughs> oh, with respect to the, to the audit, it looks like we're on track. We won't have to request an extension. That's great news. Um, I did, I have begun to receive the assessments for our personal property assessments and the utilities as well, so those invoices. Um, Director Bond. So, uh, former Sheckles, former Sheckles and I will be uh, interviewing over the next few weeks for a vacant crew member position. Um, also, a reminder for Church Street residents that uh, over the next few weeks, um, there, there will be a water outage for most of the day. We're trying to consolidate that to a Saturday. Um, <coughs> traffic, things of that nature, um, and a portion of Church Street towards the 7-Eleven side will be close to the traffic. Um, they want to install a water line tap and a valve um, for a business downtown. And as the contractor narrows down a day, you will receive letters um, to your mailboxes of uh, notification. Um, it, has Chief First joined us? I don't think so. Um, if he had an administrative update, it would be just the, he's working on the process of um, getting us, getting the police department into their new space. So, all right. Um, one last thing, and I'll probably say this again at the end before we take general public comment. Trunk or Treat is this Saturday, 6 to 8, up here um, next to Town Hall at the school board location um, to avoid some of the traffic and potential overload um, because Washington International Horse Show is this week and will be a very busy time on Saturday. So we want to make sure that our community can be together um, and enjoy it without um, having a lot of other traffic coming through. All right. Um, now it's time for general public comment on any other uh, concern or issue. If you're online, please raise your hand. If you are in the audience, please come to the podium. Mm -hmm. All right. um, I want to remind everyone that uh, the presidential election is really soon, and early voting starts on Thursday and then runs through the next Thursday. It'll be at the Upper Marlboro Rec Center is the, the closest one, um, and then election day is the Tuesday after. Whatever the first Tuesday of November is. Um, we're also still doing board games every other Wednesday. The next one will be next week, uh, 6 to 9 in this room. Yeah, we're not that crazy. Um, are there any online comments, Mr. Thomas? Oh. None at this time. We have one more in the room. Jennifer Walls, Tom Carroll, Lane, Um, Jim Walls, Tom Carroll, Lane, Um, Wendy, if I didn't ask for my ice cream shop, so um, I didn't have one. That would be great. So I would like to get 
the uh, property standards and charter review done like yesterday, because I believe it's holding up us getting to the other business list that Marlboro Rose is constant one. And I think you knew that. Um, this past weekend, I went to a festival in Hyattsville called it's like a Portland Green Festival thing, and it was really great. Uh, they had uh, different vendors, they had food trucks, they had a uh, Department of Environment out there, they had Anacostia watershed people out there, they had a couple of booths for the town of Highfield people, and it was just a really nice event, and they did partner with a couple uh, county, or I guess U.S. Department of Energy, uh, Environment, so, you know, those type of uh, places. And I, as I was there, and I was seeing the high school people, I was like, this would be great if we have it in our little town. So, just an idea. I know it was a, a partnership with Prince Georgia County, Go Green. So, maybe see if PG County has other things to link up with, or if we can do it from high school. Great. Thank you. Well, I will take this moment to note that our events committee meetings, Commissioner Brooks is the uh, commissioner on those, and they are the first Thursday of the month at mm -hmm. 7? 6 30. And they're online. Um, that link should be on our calendar, but if it's not, you can email uh, info and get the link. Um, and um, if you have Express interest in the committee, do keep an eye on your mailbox because emails are coming. Um, most of our other committees need new leadership and we'll be we'll be looking for that so we can get them back off the ground over the winter months. All right. Um, we will move on to preliminary approval of the next meeting agenda. Um, so whoops. Um, so we'll still have property standards because we won't vote on it until the end of the month. Charter review, um, and we're actually going to start looking at that. Um, we won't have the continuity of operations plan ready by right then, but maybe the end of the month or early December. Um, is there anything else? It is, it is possible I will have Marble Town Roads ready to go on there, but I'm not sure. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to bump onto the agenda for the next session? Hearing nothing, we will move forward with uh, the agenda we have. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Um, we do this by call. All, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously, uh, Mr. Thomas. And we are adjourned at 7.42 p.m. Aye. You don't have to